Українське радіо, ви слухаєте Українське радіо. Ми продовжуємо транслювати об'єднаний марафон провідних українських телеканалів і радіостанцій «Єдині новини ЮА разом». Щойно ви прослухали свіжий випуск новин від наших колег-телевізійників. А зараз дайджест головних новин за минулу добу від українського радіо, але вже англійською мовою. Слухаємо. Perhaps the most terrifying and devastating of this invasion are the child casualties. Eight-year-old Elis, who died on the streets of Akhtyrka while her grandfather tried to protect her, or Polina from Kiev, who died in the shelling with her parents. Fourteen-year-old Arseny was hit in the head by a wreckage and could not be saved because an ambulance could not get to him on time because of intense fires. When Russia said that it is not waging war against civilians, I call out the names of these murdered children first, Alena Zelensky stated. Nine people, including three children, have been killed overnight in Russian airstrikes on Chitomir region, central Ukraine. The Russian latest chairman completely destroyed the boarding house and several private houses, the state emergency service of Ukraine reported. Two problems were killed during a missile strike on the town of Madam Chitomir, all this means the administration reported. Ukraine launched a new attempt to get civilians through six humanitarian corridors. Any attempts to establish humanitarian corridors for civilians fleeing areas of heavy fighting failed. Ahead of the latest evacuation, Deputy Prime Minister Minister for Reintegration of the Temporary Occupied Territories, Irina Verishuk, urged Russian forces to control their commitment to local ceasefires. I address the Russian Federation. You have assumed the official public obligation to ceasefire at 9 a.m. on March 9, 2022. We have a negative experience when even official commitments didn't work. This is the Mariupol, the Parisian front, as well as the Volnavaha Pakrovsk. Volnavaha residents reach out to me asking for today's Russia's promise to be kept and for people to leave the places where they are hiding from shelling, grass and destructive attacks that are killing them. Separately, I want to stress about Vorzil. There is a child care unit with 55 children and 26 staff members. It's another special operation for the evacuation of this facility. We ask the armed forces of the Russian Federation to abide by their commitments and cease fire from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. as we agreed, Deputy Prime Minister is Ирина Верещук said. An attempt of evacuation from southern port city of Mariupol has once again failed. According to Deputy Mayor of Mariupol, Sergei Orlov, the city is under steady bombardment. Russian soldiers also fire on private cars trying to escape the siege, forcing them to return to Mariupol. They are shooting and bombing the humanitarian corridor. That's the situation, Sergei Orlov says, calling the situation a genocide. Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuleba accused Russia of holding 400,000 residents of Mariupol hostage by shelling the city despite efforts to establish a safe evacuation corridor. According to Kuleba, almost 3,000 newborn babies in the city lack medicine and food. Head of the Donetsk Regional Military Administration Pavlo Kirilenko also reports that as a result of an air attack by Russian troops, a maternity hospital, hospital, children's department and therapy in the center of Mariupol have been destroyed. Civilians have been unable to evacuate from Ukrainian town of Izum because of Russian shelling in the eastern Kharkiv region. According to the region's governor, Oleg Hussein-Gubov, an evacuation route from Izum to Lazava was one of the six humanitarian corridors announced earlier. But buses are still waiting at the entrance to the town, not being able to ferry people out. President Vladimir Zelensky says a no-fly zone over Ukraine's territory is needed to be imposed immediately to avoid humanitarian catastrophe. The idea of no-fly zone have so far been dismissed by Western leaders amid fears that it would lead to a greater escalation of the war. Zelensky believes that the international community will be responsible for a mass humanitarian catastrophe if it does not agree to impose a no-fly zone to protect his country as soon as possible. In a daily televised address, Zelensky said, Ukraine keeps playing its way to its partners from the first day of Russia's invasion. If you do not close our sky, you will also be responsible.
responsible for this catastrophe a large scale humanitarian disaster. Russia used missiles, aviation, helicopter against us, against our cities and our infrastructure. This is the world humanitarian duty to react. But no decision made. We are grateful to Poland for the alternative, their readiness to provide Ukraine with fighter aircraft. Poland has made an official decision to transfer fighters to a respective base, American base. We also have a confirmation, we heard everything, that there is an agreement of the American side with Poland, it has been reached, but at the same time we hear that Poland's proposal is supposedly ungrounded, and this is said in Washington. We also read about this, so when will there be a decision? Listen, we are at war, we don't have the time for all the signals. It's not ping-pong. It's about human lives. We ask you once again, take decisions faster. Don't avoid responsibility. Send us the fighters, President Vladimir Zelensky said. Ukrainians keep calling out to the world to impose a no-fly zone. Ukrainian writer Oksana Zabushka addressed the European Parliament on the plight of her fellow citizens under attack by Russia. Every coffee break you are taking during your discussions about how to interfere without provoking Putin to go further costs someone's life, most likely a civilian's, a woman's or a child's. You have all seen videos of how Ukrainian civilians, men and women, stop Russian tanks with bare hands and loud curses. Here lies the secret of our heroism. We are not afraid of Russia. Women of Ukraine are fleeing en masse from the Russian bombs flattening their homes, while Ukrainian men stay to fight as long as, as it's needed to free Europe from the specter of the new totalitarianism. They all know their job, both men and women. Please, don't be afraid to protect the sky above them. As Russian missiles are practically destroying the country, Ukrainians see the complete closure of the sky over its territory as a solution. In a military context, a no-fly zone is designed to stop aircraft from entering banned airspace, usually to prevent attacks. A no-fly zone over Ukraine would mean that the military forces, specifically NATO forces, would engage directly with any Russian planes spotted in those skies and shoot at them if necessary. Ukraine's state-run nuclear company has warned that radioactive substances could be released from the Chernobyl plant because it cannot cool wasted nuclear fuel after its power connection was severed. Energatom said in a statement that it had not been possible to carry out work to restore power to the site which has been occupied by Russian troops because of the fighting in the area. Any warming of the approximately 20,000 spent fuel assemblies in Chernobyl could lead to the release of radioactive substances into the environment. The radioactive cloud could be carried by a wind to other regions of Ukraine, Belarus, Russia and Europe, the statement reads. Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba has called on Russia to urgently observe a temporary ceasefire in order to allow work to take place to restore power to the defunct Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Reserve diesel generators have 40-hour capacity to power the Chernobyl plant. After that, cooling systems of the storage facility for spent nuclear fuel will stop, making radiation leaks imminent, Dmitry Kuleba stated. Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba says he has limited expectations for planned talks with the Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov. The negotiations are scheduled for March 10. Ahead of the talks, Kuleba urged Lavrov to approach the talks in good faith, not from the propagandistic perspective. My expectations from the negotiations are restrained. I don't have any heightened expectations, but we'll be pressing as much as possible. Our interest in season fire, liberating our territories, and thirdly, of course, resolving all humanitarian issues and disasters. It's not even a question, it's certainly a humanitarian catastrophe created by the Russian army, Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba said. Hundreds of protesters have been detained by the occupation forces in Russian-controlled Kherson. There are reports of more than 400 people detained for protesting against Moscow offensive. Due to the fierce resistance of the residents of Kherson, invading Russian forces have brought Russian National Guard units into the southern Ukrainian city of Kherson to introduce a police regime. Ukrainian general staff reports. The pace of Russia's invasion has slowed significantly, Ukraine's armed forces said on Tuesday. Yet the enemy continues the offensive operation across the country. According to the General Staff of Armed Forces of Ukraine, Russian troops are increasingly violating the rules of international humanitarian law on military conflict. The enemy continues to concentrate its main efforts on encircling capital Kiev, capturing Sylvie, Kharkiv, Mariupol, Nikolaev. The statement reads. Over the past day, the Russian military launched more than 50 missile and artillery attacks on eastern Kharkiv, which is currently under Ukrainian control.